սիրելի բարեպաշտ հայորդիներ։ Ուրախ ենք հայրապետական մեր որդնությունը բերելու, առակելական մեր սուրպ եկերեցու հավատարիմ զավակներիտ։ Մեր բարեմաղթանքներն ենք բերում ժամանակ որաթերթի գլխավոր խմբագրին, դիար առագոչունյա� մեծ է եղել դերը հայ պարբերականների, որոնք հատկապես սպյուրքում տեղեկատվական իրենց գործնեությունից բացի կարևոր առակելություն են իրականասնում, ամրապնդելով մեր ժողորդի զավակների սերը հանդեպ մայրենի լեզուն և � կոստանդնում պորսում հիմնադրեցին ժամանակ որաթերթը։ Բարբերականի խմբագիրների և աշխատակիսների թվում եղել են արև մտահայ գրականության ամվանի մշակներ, ովքեր կարևոր ներդրում են բերել բարբերականի կայացման դիար առա գոչունյանի ղեկավարությամբ մեկ դարյա վաստակով շարնակում է իրավանդը բերել թուրքյո հայամայնքի կյանքում։ Իր ռապարակումներով մեր ժողորդի զավակներին հաղոր դարձնելով աշխարակաղաքական կարևոր համայնքային ու ազգային խնդիրների շուրջ։ Աղոթում ենք, որ բարձյալ նաստված զորակից լինի ժամանակ որաթերթի խմբագրակազմին, հաջողության պիրականացնելու իրենց շնորակալ գործնեությունը, հառուրամյա թերթի ճանապարը Եղիցին ընձեզ և ընտամենեսյան ամեն։is an irreversible flow from the past to the present, a process leading from the present to the future in which all facts leave proof. And this chain of consecutive proofs as a real occurrence or a dream unpredictably dies and is reborn within itself in an endless and non-exhausting way and leaving a trace. In the history of the Armenian press, the Istanbul daily newspaper Jamanak Time has played a significant role, just like all Armenian papers and periodicals, but it is also different and unique. Jamanak is the only one that has been continuously published without a break for over one century. Jamanak is the only one, while having many reasons to cease, remain true to its name always flowing and continuing, never exhausting its force or terminating its activity. It was the early period of the Young Turks coming to power. 
the end of Abdul Hamid's absolutist regime, Armenians also tended to be full of optimism. Three months after the Young Turk Revolution and the proclamation of the Second Constitutional Monarchy on October 28, 1908, the brothers Misak and Sarkis Kochunyan founded a daily newspaper, Jamanak. The proclamation of the Ottoman Constitution in 1908 was greeted with great joy by Western Armenians, both in the capital and provincial towns. Armenians were instilled with hope. They welcomed the Constitution with jubilant gatherings and demonstrations. Naturally, if we look at the 1908 to 1909 issues of the Jamanak newspaper, we notice that there is much information regarding the revolution and the promulgation of the Second Constitution. A new period of freedom was opening up, and it was possible to speak about everything. It was on this wave that Jamanak raised its banner. The founders of the newly established daily were familiar faces to Istanbul. Misak, the first chief editor, had already become a well-known writer and journalist. Under the pen name of Kasim, he had collaborated with the newspapers Byzantion, Arevelian Mamul, Masis, Manzume i Efkar, and had written books that brought him recognition both by Western and Eastern Armenian audiences. Misa Gochunyan was a knowledgeable expert on Armenian life and reality. In addition to being an editor, writer, and community administrator, he was also the author of many literary works. In addition to all this, he is the first translator of Narek, which he translated into modern Armenian. Thanks to him, Narek was translated into the popular vernacular for the first time. Kasim was also an educator and a delegate to the assembly of the Armenian Millet. His status within the community and his literary fame were sufficient for the well-known figures of the time. Kritkur Zorab, Zabel Yasayan, Yervant Odyan, Rupen Sevag and others to gather around the newspaper. That newspaper was the complete product of a new period and wave. It represented the birth of new ideas. It was headed by a figure that sympathized with these new ideas. And thus, Krikor Zorab, Zabel Yesayan, and others were able to immediately find a place within the paper. At the turn of the century, when this professional group gathered and contributed to the publication of the newspaper, its print run reached 8,000. This was unprecedented in the history of our press. In the following years, the print run of Jamanag reached 15,000. This, of course, did not mean that it had 15,000 readers. The paper passed from hand to hand, from household to household. That is to say, it had a larger readership. Misa Gochunyan's contemporaries used to say that he contributed to the development of the general culture of Istanbul Armenians. This is because Jamanak had material appealing to everyone within the different segments of the Armenian society of Istanbul. Everyone could find something of interest and answers to their questions. Of course, in the initial period, publishing a daily newspaper in Armenian in Istanbul did not just mean conveying a message to a limited milieu. In general, when we mention the word society, we must picture something different in the case of pre-1915 Istanbul. In a city with a total population of some 600,000 to 700,000, Armenians numbered almost 150,000. That's to say, Armenians had a significant presence with a rich cultural life and daily lifestyle. The biggest plus that Jamanak provided was that it was the paper of the people and understandable by all the segments of the society. When we say it was the paper of the people, we refer to the interest it enjoyed by wide segments of the public. Jamanak was a part of the daily sustenance in our home. 
From the day it was first published until today, some hundred years, I guess, we have continued to follow Jamana. Jamanak attracted readers by its platform of free discussions that treated issues in which Armenians were interested. Equally important was the publication of literary works. Starting from the paper's very first edition in 1908, Kasim, its founder, began to publish the novel From the Midst of Fire. The novel was published as a serial and described the events of 1896. Such serial novels played a significant role in the development of the press. Odian, the most brilliant representative of our serial novel, felt himself lucky to have Misak Gochunyan at his side, someone who understood him and with whom he could perfectly collaborate. Sarkis Kochunyan, the other founder of Jamanak, was also well known in the community. In addition to serving as the chairman of the Committee on Finance of the Armenian Patriarchate of Istanbul, and as the head of the parish council of the Patriarchal Cathedral of St. Mary, he was also a successful businessman. Advertisement was a new business in Istanbul at that time, and Sarkis founded one of the first such agencies. He basically dealt with the financial and creative sides of the newspaper, obtaining advertisements, notices, and coming up with new ideas with which to expand its readership and increase the print run. It was perhaps Sarkis Gochunyan who called for a lottery to be placed on the first page of the paper. If, on the one hand, there were Zabel Yesayan's Gazgazotnej, doubters, and the notice that they would start to publish Misak Gochunyan's novel, equally attractive was the lottery of the railway company. In 1913, after the untimely death of Kasim, Sarkis Kochunyan had to assume the full responsibility of publishing the newspaper and edited it in a period that was the most difficult and tragic for Armenians. When reading Jamanak, you feel that the intense fear and the danger of massacres started to circulate in the atmosphere of the time. It seemed that our writers and journalists had predicted that something evil would soon explode on the scene. The feeling that something bad would happen probably started in 1909, when the Adana massacres occurred in which 30,000 Armenians were murdered. To write about this and the 1915 massacres that followed was out of the question. Censorship was very strict but every effort was made to inform about the catastrophe that befell the Armenians and to elucidate the happenings. Archbishop Zavin Deryeryayan of Baghdad, the Armenian Patriarch of Istanbul, who was exiled, writes in his memoirs that Sarkis Kochunyan secretly sent copies of Jamanak to him every day. It was through the newspaper that he was informed about what was happening. We must appreciate and praise that individual who was able, through his vitality, to keep our people alive even after the genocide. Many newspapers have come and gone over the years, but Jamanak has consistently been published. And we must remember that Jamanak was a paper that continued after the genocide. Many papers closed, many projects were interrupted, but Jamanak survived. Odeon returned from exile, and the next day he went to his place of work, the editorial office, sat down and began to write his memoirs, Accursed Years. The Armenians of Istanbul were in a crisis. Many of the Jamana correspondents and writers had either been killed, banished, or had fled. Even in such conditions, the paper was published every day as if it had assumed the obligation to survive. <laughs> 
During the period of armistice, everyone started to write this or that against the government with regard to the events of 1915. When Atatürk came to power, they all fled at once. Our paper never let things get out of hand. We never went to extremes. We always kept our sense of balance and proportion as necessary. In 1921-1922, the mention of Jorovurti Tsaina, Voice of the People, appeared next to Jamanag's logo. The paper took a democratic liberal direction. Jamanag was not the official organ of the Ramgavar party, but its mouthpiece. The Gochunyan family generously allowed us to use the paper as a platform in order to spread our liberal and democratic ideas. Vahan Tekeyan was the editor of the joint edition. Loyal to the tradition started by Kasim, Tekeyan continued the liberal stand of the newspaper, bringing in prominent intellectuals of the time, such as Arshak Chobanyan, Hagop Oshagan, and others. Writers who would in time become the pioneers of diasporic Armenian literature published their first works of the period in the pages of Jamanak. Vasken Shushanyan, Nishan Beshiktashlian, Nigoros Sarafian, and Levon Surmelian. In my childhood years, I remember that my first encounter with Jamanak was behind the school desk at elementary school when they taught us about our Armenian writers. In our textbooks, there was a biography next to every small literary text. Mostly, they contained pictures of sullen-faced men with beards or mustaches. I will always remember that under most of these names, it was written that they either worked at the Zamanak daily in Istanbul or had their works of younger years published in it. When composing the history of Zamanak, it is impossible not to remember the women of the Kochunyan family. Mariam, or Yamo, as she was called by friends, was the mother of Misak and Sarkis. Ardemis was Misak's wife. Misak and his wife morally adopted Mardiros, the eldest son of Sarkis, who was given the name of Kasimurti. Araxi was the wife of Sarkis. And she became the owner of the paper after her husband's death. <laughs> I knew her personally. She was a modest lady like many women of her generation. She was God-fearing, not just a lover of the church, but a God-fearing woman. Sarkis and Araxi had seven children, three sons and four daughters. The oldest Gochunyan in age was my mother's brother, Mardiros Gochunyan. Then there's Eliza Gochunyan, followed by Sirar P. Gochunyan. I am the son of Sirar P. Then there's Melik Gochunyan, Mary Gochunyan, and Ara Gochunyan, who was now the grandfather of our Ara. And there's Aline, who is still alive. I started out in the typesetting unit of the paper and later on went into administration. I was the administration supervisor. This Jamanak family has one tradition. Every member must collaborate with the paper in one way or another. Everyone according to his or her ability. The one who had literary talents would write, and those who would not write would do something else. Jamanak was not a newspaper that started with any political influence. It was pure journalism. When glancing at the paper, we notice that the family was engaged in journalism. In 1926, after the death of Sarkis Kochunyan, the chief editorship of the newspaper should have passed on to the eldest of the family, Mardiros, the son of Kasim. But since he was studying in Europe at that time, Melik Kochunyan became the editor. After the untimely death of Melik, Mardiros and Ara 
consecutively edited the paper for the next 50 years. Ara also started out with typesetting and continued doing so for many years. Very often, Martiros, as the elder brother used to say, if I am no longer around, Ara would make the paper published. In fact, Ara was the pillar of the paper. In order to be able to publish the newspaper every day, he used to work hard like a worker. I know that they always created a chain of sacrifice. That's to say they all assumed their roles in order. After Sarkis and Mesak came Margiros and Ara, who continued the paper. Today we have young Ara taking over from his father and mother. Thus, it was a work of sacrifice. And I can say that they were able to keep the paper afloat even after having passed through all the storms on the way. The publisher of a newspaper dealing with minorities in Turkey could not be free of such storms. Restrictions and hindrances were especially numerous in the 1940s during the period of one-party rule, when there were overt manifestations of discrimination against minorities. The brothers Mardiros and Ara undertook obligatory military conscription of non-Muslim minorities from the ages of 20 to 40. When Melik was running the paper, there was the military conscription of 20-year-old men. Martiros and Ara were obliged to serve. Due to his illness, Melik was not able to serve. Not yet having overcome the hardship of the obligatory military service, Armenians, just like other minorities, were subject to the burden of the wealth tax of the early 1940s. As a journalistic institution, Jamanak was exempt from these taxes, however was not able to avoid the consequences of the wealth tax that affected the community at large. <laughs> This atmosphere influenced the content of the newspaper. The departure of people decreased the print run at the same time. This situation caused decrease in the number of advertisements. For that reason, newspapers were weakened economically. Thus, many Armenian families and businessmen faced considerable losses. By the end of the war, after 1945, these people immediately left the city and emigrated to other countries. The worst thing in all this was that the majority of those who left were Armenian-speaking people. The Istanbul writer Zavin Biberian reflects the happenings in the most realistic way in his novel, The Sunset of the Ants. Jamanak published the novel in serial form in the 1970s. In 1944, the Armenian Patriarch of Istanbul, Archbishop Mesrop Naroyan, passed away. Archbishop Kevor Kaslanyan became the locum tenens. He had also served as the locum tenens from 1922 to 1927, prior to the election of Archbishop Naroyan. The period was determining, even a turning point both for the family and the newspaper. There was chaos in Istanbul. There were pro- and anti-Arslanian factions after the death of Patriarch Naroyan. Some community members opted for immediate patriarchal election, while the supporters of Arslanian were more cautious. In fact, these supporters were not against the election, they just tried to take precautions. In Turkey, instead of claiming for their rights by putting precaution aside, Armenians had been obliged to behave carefully considering every detail in some circumstances. Archbishop Arslanian was a very important person for the Armenians of Istanbul and for Echmiadzin. He became the locum tenens and afterwards the situation in Istanbul again got troubled. Once again, Jamanak stood behind Arslanian. We have always been pro-Echmiadzin. 
After the shocking divisions, there was no clear-cut winner or loser for a long time. In 1951, Archbishop Karikin Khachadurian, originally from Trabzon, the primate of the Argentine Diocese of the Armenian Apostolic Church, was elected the Patriarch of Istanbul with the consensus of all parties. He was equally acceptable to all sides. Jamanak did not belong to this or that individual. Loyal to its principles, Jamanak took the side of the Holy See of Echmeazin. Our family elders never regretted their stand. They always said that they had reached their goal. In fact, they were not defeated in their views. They never regretted the fact that the print run of the paper decreased in that period. They were not troubled because of that. They said we shared our thoughts with the people. In 1948, Jamanak enthusiastically celebrated the 40th anniversary of its founding. On the occasion, Toros Azadian, one of the writers of the newspaper and the head of the Patriarchal Secretariat, published the 40th anniversary memorial booklet of Jamanak. In the preface, Mardiros Kuchunyan, or as he would sign his name, Koch, wrote, There is such a bond, such a mutual confidence between the people in Jamanag that we were able to overcome all kinds of moral and material difficulties due to that. My grandfather used to collect books in Armenian from the church and bring them home. Sometimes they used to fall onto the floor. He taught us to pick them up, place them on our head, and then kiss them. He told us to put them in a safe place. That's what we did. But sometimes we did also see copies of Jamanak that had fallen onto the floor. I used to pick them up, put them on my head, and then kiss them. There were many people who remaining at the heart of the paper for years with the Kochunyans played an undeniable role in the creation of such a strong bond between Jamanak and the community. I worked with Mardiros and Ara Kojunya. I considered them my brothers. I was younger than them. I feel emotional because both Mardiros Goch and Ara Goch were models for me. In my time, I vividly remember Ara Aginyan, Tsovag, Adrine Dadrian, Vartuhi Jalalyan, Zahrad, Komikyan, Dr. Shikaher, Ara Güler. I was surrounded by all of them in the printing house. In the early years of his youth, Zare used to write small works secretly from his parents. He used to show them to his friends and others. Finally, he found the courage to send some of his poems to Jamanak. The paper's editorial board liked one of the poems called Astra, the Star. Fahram Sarkisyan, or Mr. Tsovak as he was called, headed the board. To the great delight of Zare, he appreciated and published the poem. Our editors, Krikor Hudaverdian, Varujan Sayajian, Yervant Kopelian, were professional. There are other names like Vahram Baronian, Dr. Kevorkian, Barsek Tuklajian, Harant Papazian, dentist, and Levon Kapamajian. There is also Vartan Ozinian, who is now in France. Vartan was a very close friend who also worked there. Besides working with Ara Gochunian, I also worked with Ara Güler and Ara Abrahamian. So there were Ara Gochunyan, Ara Güler, Ara Abrahamian, and Ara Aginian. There were times when four Aras were present in the editorial office. We saw Aginian frequently, who by then was engaged in commerce. 
Hayrıs angün muner, yer ag illa lov gükürer. My father had a column and used to write about the political issues of the day. He met my mother around the same time. In 1937, he was writing anti-Hitler pieces, and there were not many who were anti-Hitler at the time. My mother did not like Hitler either, and she read my father's column every day. It seems that she really enjoyed my father's writings. Takfor Kamer and Mardiros Toran were frequent visitors. They had already formed a sort of group. They were the close friends of my mother's brother. Aragüler, if he was not abroad, would inevitably visit and talk about where he had traveled to recently and what he had seen. I did this reportage in 1952. Uh, it is the one about the Armenian fishermen. I have done other large-scale reportages, critiques. I have written more. My Armenian is not that good. When I wrote in Armenian, it was Krikor Khudaverdian who corrected it. An American came to Turkey to look for Noah's Ark. It was an important piece of news for me because at the same time I worked at Magnum and was a correspondent for Time Life magazine. I called New York. They told me to cover the story. So I went to Dogu Beyazit and climbed the mountain of Ararat. I did all the reportage. There is also the Turkish version published by by Yeni Istanbul. For the Armenian version, Jamanak translated it from there. I climbed the mountain of Ararat twice, all the way to the top. When I was a student, my father would take me to the editorial office during my summer vacations. I liked being there. For example, there was Toros Asatian, may he rest in peace. I remember him well. Of course, there were my uncle, my father, and Krikor Khudaverdian. There were typesetters and their boss, Mr. Antranik. Jamanag was not only a newspaper in an ordinary editorial office, it was an assemblage of people with various professional skills that can best be described as a brotherhood. Vartan Melikian, who prepared the paper's photo templates for 40 years, still lives with the spirit of that brotherhood today. Lili Goch wrote this letter of commendation for me 31 years ago for all my assistance. She said to me, keep it, you may need it one day. Shamanak took the pulse of the community very frequently. When we have a look at the issues of various periods, it is not difficult to see that the newspaper made every effort to correctly inform the society and duly collect necessary news. The newspaper, both in its founding years and in the Republican era till the 1970s, in which the community was still dynamic in Istanbul, did not remain behind the other newspapers of Turkey in terms of technical infrastructure and content. Jamanak entirely reflected the agenda of the country, but also paid attention to the developments within the community. During the diplomatic travels of Turkish politicians, Mardiros Koch was one of those journalists who accompanied them, thus offering first-hand news to Armenian readers. When we say the minority press, we take it for granted that it must be engaged in minority issues. Jamanak, however, was not like that. 
it is possible to write the history of Turkey based on the paper's publications. In addition to official and political news, we see comments on the daily course of the community and the church in a parallel way to developments in the sciences and arts. We also have literary pieces and serial novels. This newspaper has always successfully found the ideal middle ground, given the fact that it has grasped the identity parameters of its readership. This is also because Zamanak is a paper published primarily for the Armenian community in Turkey. The paper's audience is a citizen of Turkey with Armenian origins and, in terms of faith, a member of the Armenian Apostolic Church. The newspaper also devoted much coverage to sports news, especially covering those Armenians who successfully competed in various Turkish and international championships. We had a famous boxer, Garbis Zakaryan, who was the champion of Turkey and competed in European championships. Jacques Hayrabedian always liked competitions organized here. He helped Garbis a lot and trained him. In 1949, we went to Ankara and I became the champion of Turkey. I again became the champion of Istanbul in 1950 and the champion of Turkey. Afterwards, I did two years of military service. I won championship in the army and the army club. I later turned professional and fought in many international boots. Jamanak did not overlook cultural developments in the community, concerts, exhibitions and theatre. Shahan Arzuruni, an Istanbul Armenian pianist, now living in the United States, remembers that the paper's impartial criticism played a constructive role and that sincere praise touched the artist. In my view, the fact that a newspaper assumed such a mission is very important. It has both a dimension of repercussion and education. It is really important to show the positive and negative aspects of his art to the artist. A beauty contest. Perhaps hard to believe, but in 1952, Jamanak organized such a contest for the children of the community. While little Sosi did not win the contest, she still lives with those unmatched memories till today. In these years, we did not understand what a beauty contest was. I do not remember how I participated, naturally. All I recollect is that I wore a nice dress, had my hair curled, and had my picture taken. Where we went, which auditorium or stage, I do not remember. All I remember is that we walked a long way dressed up in those clothes. Some 20 years later, Sosi's daughter, Lerna, participated in the second beauty contest that was organized again by the Shamanak newspaper. In my view, the fact that Jamanak organized such a beauty contest was something very important. Jamanak did it so that families and children could meet and have a good time. Jamanak lived on by inspiring a bit of happiness and hope. The newspaper progressed by overcoming the difficulties of various periods. The only thing that was not overcome was the separation from Armenia. Every night we waited for the radio broadcast from Armenia. 
We used to wait hungry just to hear this voice. And once we heard it, we used to feel satisfied. for over seven years says that he started reading the paper to get news from Armenia. Naturally, I always expected to hear good news from Armenia in the paper, specifically about politics there. Archbishop Karikin Khachadurian, the Armenian Patriarch of Istanbul, died in 1961. His Holiness Vaskin I, Supreme Catholicos of all Armenians, traveled to Istanbul on this occasion and brought the blessings of the Mother See of Holy Echmiyat. The Catholicos was welcomed with great honors. There was a majestic funeral as the Catholicos was present. He stayed in Istanbul for a while and visited all the schools and cultural centers. Properly, we escorted him during these visits. He came first and with his arrival, the Armenian people were spiritually satiated. The Catholicos was very kind with a pleasing face. May God bless his soul. The Catholicos' visit paved the way to the establishment of bonds with Armenia. Garbis Muradian, a writer of Jamanag at that time, remembers how he and Hagop Savaslian visited Armenia at the Catholicos' invitation. We went there on behalf of Jamanak and were warmly received. The Catholicos even offered facilities so that we could be in communication with Istanbul. The Catholicos even gave us an official paper allowing us to send news from Armenia to Jamanak for free, without paying any fee to the post office. Some ten years later, round trips started on the route Istanbul-Moscow-Yerevan under the initiative and organization of Garbis Ugurlian. Due to that, Armenia became a bit more accessible. We visited all the scenic sites. The people were wonderful. Etchmiadzin was the most important place for us. At that time, there was Catholicos Vazken. We used to visit him in order to receive his blessing. We used to get an appointment for Sunday. On Sundays, he used to receive us as the first group and to escort us to the church. In the 1960s, Jamana editorial staff also published the Arshad paper, which was edited by Lily Koch, Ara Kochunyan's wife. As a descendant of a family of intellectuals, Magardich and Nevrik Sebuyan, you could say she was the guardian angel of Armenian communal values. Relations between our two families go back to some 100 years ago. Mrs. Lily's father, Mr. Megerdich, was a friend of my father some 100 years ago. We always had family relations. Lily Koch was known for her publications in which she reflected her literary spirit. The community paid attention to her views and advice. Painter and sculptor Errol Sarafian upon reading Lili Koch's article on the celebrity of Harutyun Amira Bezjan and her proposal to place a bust on the grave of the benefactor, decided to make it a reality. Lili Koch was a very kind, modest, magnanimous person. I do not know how to describe her other than by saying that she was the embodiment of goodness. That's how I met her and expressed a desire to prepare that bust. They accepted it and I started working on it. It took two months. She was quite pleased. When finished, it was placed on the grave. News about Soviet Armenia were more frequently found in the pages of Jamanak, especially when the news was about successes obtained in various fields. In 1973, the championship of the Ararat football team 
became a source of happiness for the readers of Jamarak. Marderos Koch, the senior member of the Kochunyan family, suddenly died at his desk when writing the news about the Ararat Bayern Munich match. He closed his eyes to life, confident that Jamanak would continue after him without doubt. From the editorial staff at Jamanak, I knew Martiros Goc. He was 20 to 25 years older than me. He had graduated from Robert College and knew some six to seven languages. I had counted six myself. He probably knew one more. He was an important individual. He used to come to all the meetings of the governorship and to participate in briefings when ministers and ambassadors came to Istanbul. Istanbul Armenians faced new troubles in the 1970s. The attacks of Asala had a very negative impact over the perception of Armenians in the country. The daily life of Turkey's Armenians changed, becoming more on edge and difficult. When news of an attack abroad reached Turkey, people here started to look at Armenians with enmity. Those were very difficult years. Each Asala attack caused indignation amongst the people. Our community also blamed the attacks, calling for an end to the violence. In any case, the atmosphere was not auspicious. The war in Cyprus had just ended. The crisis it engendered directly impacted upon the country's minorities their institutions and rights. Minorities in Turkey are hostages to international events that develop independently of their will. From September 6 to 7, Greeks suffered due to the Cyprus problem. In 1974 and afterwards, when Turkish diplomats were being killed and when April 24 commemorations or resolutions were being accepted, Armenians appeared on the agenda. The same with Jews, when problems related to Israel were present. The psychological situation caused by the attacks of Asala within the community and the difficulties it raised were reflected in the Istanbul Armenian press. At that time, the chief editors of Jamanag and Marmara organized a joint press conference expressing the community's disapproval of these attacks. Whenever something happened against Turkey, all eyes were fixed on this community. What are you going to say and do in response? They would wait for an official statement from the Armenian Patriarchate of Istanbul or elsewhere. Each time a suitable answer was given. Those were very difficult years for the Armenians of Istanbul.
the Jamanak newspaper was about to complete its 70 years of existence. Arakoch and his wife Lily were at the helm of the newspaper. As their age advanced, the couple started to think about a generational change. Their younger son, Mardiros, died when he was a child. Sakis, the elder son, was already working at Jamanak. I never became a journalist. I liked working as a typesetter here. I did it for many years, but I was never a man of pen and paper. Sarkis's wife, Nadia Kochunyan, also started working for the newspaper. She performed all the tasks that the elders could no longer do. Whoever passes under the roof of this place works with the same spirit. Everyone is tied to Jamanak with love. It's this spirit that creates dynamism and improves the quality of the paper every day. In 1988, the 80-year-old Jamanak newspaper witnessed and chronicled the rebirth of Armenia. The Karabakh movement had begun. The newspaper reported the happenings, the general situation, and the atmosphere in Armenia and Karabakh to its readers in a balanced and equanimous way. I used to distribute the newspaper on the island of Kinali during the summer periods. We used to go from house to house hawking the newspaper to Armenian families. Some people phoned us to ask for the newspaper. We took their address and delivered the paper to them every day. Unfortunately, the good news coming from Armenia was overshadowed by a disaster. In 1988, Jamanak had to report the disastrous Spidak earthquake to its readers. I remember it well because it was raining heavily when we got the news. If I'm not mistaken, it was on December 7th. Shock and pain reigned in the editorial office. They were all crying. At the same time, the Jamanak family was about to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the newspaper. But given the terrible news, all celebrations were canceled. Gradually, the despair and grief were allayed by positive news from Armenia and Karabakh. The proclamation of the independence of the Republic of Armenia was great news for me. Armenia was something new for the Armenian community. To know Armenia and to know that a different country was there. One of my friends said to me, after the independence of Armenia, I know that there is a country there to protect me. And the guy had never been to Armenia. The Jamanak newspaper conveyed the enthusiasm of the independence of Armenia to its readers under the hope and expectation of friendship between Armenia and Turkey. These expectations, however, were not perceived by everyone in the same way. For a collage it published, Jamanag was taken to court. The accusation was quite serious, but the high prestige of the country's oldest newspaper dissipated the suspicions. The State Security Tribunal at the time found the newspaper innocent and acquitted it against the accusations of threatening the country's territorial integrity. As for the relations between Turkey and Armenia, their quality completely changed without being entirely normalized. When we leaf through the pages of the Istanbul Armenian press today, we notice that the Jamanak newspaper reported the political, economic and cultural developments between Armenia and Turkey in a regular way. 
Again, we notice at that time that the taboo on the Armenian question was gradually overcome and that Armenian journalists of Istanbul played a significant role in this process. Now, Armenians began to talk. Now, they discuss in the universities what happened in 1915. Not only Turkish historians, but also Armenians have begun to talk. This is a very important change for the Armenian community of Istanbul. As a representative of the fourth generation, Ara was already working as a part of the editorial staff, mostly writing news about Armenia. After the death of his grandfather, Ara assumed the duty of chief editor and has worked to strengthen the ties between Turkey and Armenia. In the 1990s, Jamanak had its own correspondent in Armenia for the first time. That honor was given to Sevan Deir Menja. Jamanak has good connections and relations with Armenia. We know and follow this. Ara Gochunyan provides us with very important news from Armenia. We sometimes follow news related to Armenia through Jamanak. There has always been competition between Jamanag and other community newspapers, Marmara and Agos. Some debate have even been experienced. However, these differences of opinion never harmed friendly and personal relations. For example, Jamanag and Marmara used to organize dance gatherings, and the papers would publish a joint edition about it. We sometimes have differences of opinion with Jamanak, but we also sometimes agree with the paper. But these are our problems. We always have contacts, exchange of opinion with Jamanak. The former editors and writers of Jamanak who had a century of experience and who had self-censored the words fatherland and Armenia in the past, could never imagine that the independence of the Republic of Armenia would be proclaimed, and that one day they would comment on the visits, though unofficial, of its presidents to Turkey. The 1990s also witnessed developments related to the church. In 1990, Patriarch Shnur Kalustian passed away. He was succeeded by Archbishop Karikin Kazanjan. In 1994, the paper mourned the death of the Catholicus of all Armenians, His Holiness Vaskin I, and covered the process of election of His Holiness Karikin I, the new Catholicus. After the death of Archbishop Karikin Kazanjan in 1998, Archbishop Mesrop Mutafian was elected the new Patriarch of Istanbul. His Holiness Katholikos Karikin passed away the same year, and His Holiness Karikin II was elected the Katholikos of all Armenians at Holy Echmiyazi. Shamanak's main principle regarding the relations with the Armenian Church was to stand by the Armenian Patriarchate of Istanbul and the authority of Holy Echmiadzin. For me, loyalty to Echmiadzin was a value. Sensitivity about it, the sacredness of the institution and its priority were indispensable values that passed to me. When I started working for the newspaper, I had already inherited these values and internalized them in the following years. The third millennium overlapped with the centenary anniversary of Jamanag. In addition to symbolizing the trajectory of the newspaper, it was also a celebration of the Armenian press, language and culture of the rights of Armenians living in Turkey. Now, 
When we look at the history of the media, we see that the newspaper is a medium of internal communication and a way to comprehend the outside world for people speaking the same language. Just as archaeologists excavate layer upon layer of ancient cities, so does the media over time whether daily or weekly in format, involuntarily represent the layers of culture produced in that language and makes whole its system of values. When we look at it from this angle, the newspaper represents one of the most important rights of a given minority. On the occasion of its 100 years anniversary, Jamanak was granted by the board of the Turkish Association of Journalists the Nezi Demirkent Special Award. The paper has been a member of this organization for many decades. The 100th anniversary of the newspaper overlapped with a period in which the means of communication experienced radical changes and even a revolution. The print media is under the threat of disappearance. Since 1996, I write every day. Just as I drink coffee and eat, I also continue to write. Sometimes people ask, what is there worth reading in the Armenian newspaper? We already get the daily news from the TV. I agree with that, but there are Armenian life and spirit, and that's why we should read them. The legendary story of Jamanak, the extraordinary efforts and perseverance of the Kochunyan family, prevented the 100-year-old periodical from any possibility of retreating or even taking a break or restful breath. The loyalty of its readers was the force that allowed the paper to overcome all difficulties it encountered. There might be no bread in your house one day, but the newspaper must be there. It goes without saying that publishing a daily paper for more than a century is a difficult work. Thus, Jamanak is unique in the history of our people. There is no other newspaper like Jamanak. You could fill 10 Boeing 747 jumbo jets with all the issues of Jamanak published since its foundation. If we pile all the issues one over the other, the papers would be as high as 54 mountains of Ararat. Shamanak has an obligation to exist, to persevere, because it is the time not only for the Istanbul Armenian community, but for all Armenians disseminated over the world. Jamanak is the voice of all Armenians around the world, and not just that of diaspora or Armenia. Jamanak just shows us how Armenianhood and Armenian culture are still alive. The paper has been able to preserve its face, the face of the Armenians of Istanbul throughout the years. It is not only a history, a chronology of the Istanbul Armenian community, but also a chronology of our people as a whole. The distant followers, when they read Jamanak, they know that its news are true and based on credible sources. And I believe that Jamanak is quite successful in fulfilling its mission. Jamanak represents Armenia in Turkey and Turkey in Armenia. In this way, it serves as a kind of bridge between the two states, the two people, and the two cultures. The history of Jamanak's trajectory in the Armenian press is a miracle. The term miracle invokes heroism, courage, and sacrifice. But Jamanak's miracle is different from common perceptions. The secret of Jamanak's miracle lies in its wisdom and rationality. 
It continues as it had started and will continue to do so. The paper has succeeded in balancing responsibilities due to the fact of being a citizen of the Turkish Republic with sensitivities coming from Armenian origins. Zamanag has always been a newspaper that has given priority to its responsibilities towards society and avoided leading the community to adventurism.